Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. We've had a lot of really good support uh, lately. We've been doing uh, some podcasts and we've had people just kind of giving us some shout outs here and there. So I know the channel's received well and a lot of you guys who are out there are to thank for that. So if you're spreading the word of the channel, I appreciate it very much. It's always nice to see some of the, the effort that we put into the channel comes back and that it's appreciated. So I want to say thanks to all you guys that are watching uh, and add that if you're not a subscriber to the channel, guys, you should be because it gets you entered into my monthly prize drawing giveaways for some of my sponsor products. So if you do watch on a regular basis, there's no reason not to be a subscriber. Also, if you want to support the channel, go into my description, click the link to therealshot.com and do your shopping for fishing tackle, hunting gear, outdoor activity gear. Uh, you can all do it there. And if you use the discount code STEFAN10, you'll save 10% off your order. It helps support the channel. You save a little bit on the goods that you want to purchase. So it works out for everybody. Uh, the topic for today has to do with straight tail worms. I've gotten a lot of questions from viewers out there who want to know specifically when to use a straight tail worm and which straight tail worms to choose from because there are so many different variations of a straight tail worm on the market. You wouldn't think that a straight tail worm could have different variations, but there really are a lot of different variations. And when you consider the fact that uh, stick baits, you know, like your your generals or your senkos are technically a straight tail worm as well. It really opens up the amount of different baits that fall into that category. So first and foremost, guys, to me, there are times I want to use a straight tail worm over other variations of worms on the market. So when I say other variations, I'm talking your ribbon tails, your cut tails, uh, just that type of, of worm versus a straight tail worm like this Magnum hit worm by Berkeley. That's just a straight tail worm. Uh, you know, we're talking about baits that don't put out much motion. They really are a finesse approach versus something that puts out vibration that allows the fish to find them. And because of that, for me, they're going to be the go-to worm for me when I'm fishing very clear water. If I've got, you know, water where I'm talking about five foot of visibility or more, I'm only throwing a straight tail worm. And that's because the fish are going to be able to see that worm just as good as they're going to be able to feel it. And I don't want something putting out too much vibration because I think that, you know, something with the vibration of a straight tail worm is more natural. And therefore, I like to go with, with straight tail versus, you know, something like a ribbon tail or a cut tail worm. Not to say that those won't, won't work, but I feel like the straight tail will, will get more bites. For me, I'm talking about using a straight tail worm usually in one of two applications. It's going to be either as a shaky head type worm, so it'll be rigged on a jig head. You know, there's tons and tons of shaky head jig heads that we can talk about, and we'll save that for another episode. But it's going to be on a jig head. So I'm going to fish it either directly on the bottom or I'm going to fish it in a suspended form where I'm trying to catch fish, say, out of a dock or just suspended, you know, over 30 feet of water. And then the, the other form would be to fish it as a drop shot worm. Straight tail worms work great on a drop shot rig. But again, that's going to be more of a finesse approach for me. So, you know, I'm looking at throwing straight tail worms year round. For me, the water water temperature is not nearly as important with a straight tail worm as I feel like it is with some of the other worms. But I'll be looking at fishing it more in the clear water areas. I like to fish them more in the uh, hard bottom areas, so clean bottom type stuff where I can work a jig head cleanly across the bottom. Or I'm talking about using it, you know, again, on a drop shot where I've got the worm on the bottom, but it's a couple feet, you know, a foot to three feet off the bottom on the drop shot rig. So those are the those are the 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 rigging styles that I like to use with the straight tail worm. But there are lots and lots of different areas to use them, different ways to go about and fish them. And it really comes down to just clear water for me. If it's really clear water, I'll throw it everywhere. You know, whether that's docks, around laydowns, around grass, uh, on bear banks, 45 degree banks, I'll throw it everywhere. But I want the water clarity for it to make me feel comfortable using just a straight tail worm. 
when you're talking about different types of straight tail worms, again, we've got so many to choose from, but I do have some favorites and that's what I want to show you today. First and foremost, if we're talking about just a straight tail worm, that's really good in uh, all different variations, kind of everywhere you go, you know, you've got your, you, you've got to have your stick worms and that's where the, the max scent, the general comes in. Most people would say, okay, you rig it Texas style or you rig it, uh, it's a wacky rig and there you go. I love to put these on a shaky head and fish them as I would a shaky head. I think they work great for that. They're a little bit bulkier than most straight tail worms that are in you know the five inch size, which I think is good. And at the same time, you do get a lot of motion out of them. I mean, there's a lot of, of movement there and they do glide well on a lighter jig head as well. So that's a good bait to have in your tackle box because you can rig it in so many different styles. You can you know wacky rig it, you can Texas rig it, and you can throw it as a shaky head. So you've just accomplished multiple different uh, techniques with one worm, which to me is always a good thing. I like, to, I like to limit the amount of tackle that I carry in the boat. So if I've got baits that I can use across the board, like your favorite stick bait, that to me is a very, very valuable bait to have in the boat. Next up guys, it's hard not to go anywhere with a robo worm. This is just their straight tailed six inch robo worm. One of the best all around drop shot baits, but it works really well on a, on a jig head as well. Uh, it probably is very underutilized as a shaky head worm, but it works great for that too. Uh, I love the jackal flick shake is another really good worm. One thing I like about this on a jig head is that it's they're not they're not molded perfectly straight so it's a straight tail worm but you can see they come with a little bit of curvature to them and because of that they have a little bit different motion than most straight tail worms i've caught a lot of really good fish on this on a, you know on a light eight ounce jig head or um, you know, like a 16 ounce jig head just seems like it gets bit it's one that I think works really well i do wish that they would bring out their pink color they used to have a pink color that was similar to the morning dawn color and they do not have that anymore uh, but that's a really good bait the berkeley hit worm that i mentioned before the hit worm in the regular size as well as the magnum size is one that i'd go to and catch a ton of fish on uh, that's a bait that john cox kind of turned me on to and i gotta say it's a great great bait you put it on a jig head you can catch fish everywhere you can rig that one you can rig all of these in a wacky style as well uh, but this is a really good bait to do as a, as a wacky or as a NACO uh, rig. And then the last two that I use are the same worm, just different sizes. So you've got your Zoom Finesse Worm as well as the Magnum Finesse Worm. Again, you can see these are just straight tail worms that have a little bit of a, uh, you know, a balloon shape at the, at the tail that adds a little bit of uh, kick to it and gives it a little bit of extra motion in the water. But those are the straight tail worms that I use. You know, I like to be able to pare down my plastics to a single, you know, one or two different worms. But in this case, I really do carry all of these worms in my boat and I will fluctuate through them here and there. And they all work really, really well. So it's kind of one of those things where I feel like if you go into your local bait shop, you might want to just stick with what you know that works versus having a pile of them. Because I could show you a box of worms that I've bought over the years and they just don't they didn't do it for me i didn't like them for whatever reason you know you'd think a straight tail worm's a straight tail worm but there's a lot to do with texture and shapes you know little shapes that add add some kick to it you know i do like having that little balloon at the at the tail just seems like it adds some extra kick and if you've got a shaky head that's really adding some motion into the tail so i hope this was helpful guys you know, the, the straight tail worm should be in your tackle box and you need to have some for your drop shots. You need to have some for your uh, shaky heads and they catch fish. They probably are some of the best baits to use to catch fish during your tough times of fishing. Your post front conditions, you got to have a shaky head and a drop shot. Those are two of your best baits. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I hope this kind of helps show you when to throw this versus um, you know, maybe some of the other worms that were out there. If it was, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for tomorrow's video.